welcome to the still at home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor and I'm here to keep you up to date with everything Rocket League. We got a good one for you today as per usual. Gridwatch continues our coverage of the Intel World Open with the EMEA region. Ferez featured in Double Tap and you know we got all the community goodies in Breakout. Continuing with the Rocket League Summer Road Trip this week, Kit returned to the shop with the Knight Rider Bundle. Included are the Kit Wheels, the Boost, Gullwing Topper, two player banners, and engine audio, and that will run all the way until the 14th. There's also new limited time mode coming, a 3v3 drop shot rumble from July 15th to the 19th. And you better believe I'll be playing the crap out of that, and I know Gibbs will too. It's our two favorite modes pushed together. I, I like drop shot, not rumble. He's the weird one, but I'll do drop shot rumble. Okay, moving on, we're sticking with the Intel World Open in Gridwatch. The Intel World Open raged overseas, and the EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa region has decided the eight teams that will be moving on to the regional finals. Between the return of once and future kings in Europe and the emergence of several powerful dark horse teams in historically underrepresented countries, we've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Africa was a thrilling battleground for Team Pirates XD, Snowy Darth and CP Zebra, whose road to ultimate victory was fraught with near losses and powerful opponents. Their most belligerent and persistent foes were Meh, a team who, despite their name, put up a fierce fight in both of their clashes with the Pirates, coming within a round of winning the set twice in a row. Oh, it was looking goal bone, but MT touches it to the save. It's not gonna matter. Oh. Pirates XD slow things down, and they are your African champions. They go on to face off against the best that Europe and the Middle East had to offer. They go through to the regional finals. It was Czech team Check This Out who checked out Eastern Europe. The trio of Nauman, Lottie, and Syrix forging a path to the finals while only dropping a single game. However, the simply named Poland awaited them as their final challengers and would come within a hair's breadth of resetting the bracket even foreseen a nearly 10 minute long overtime in an attempt to turn the tides early on. Nauman getting in the way, a heroic battle here from Check This Out. They've been taken here, Vesh, is it gonna hit the floor again? It's not, one more chance maybe for Poland, Cyrax, what a bump from the MVP. Cyrax stops there being any chance of a Polish player getting there and Check This Out have qualified. To the west, ET Manel stood tall, representing the pride of the Netherlands amidst a sea of Spanish and Italian players. A narrow loss to the town team in the winner's finals nearly spelled disaster for Mike Boy, though, and Oli, but the trio made a miraculous recovery, defeating established contenders Team Queso in the lower finals before heading on over to grand finals to deal TTT a devastating blow with two back-to-back -back set wins. 1-0, this one will be for 2-1, this could be it. Oli's arriving, the player of the day sends ET NL through. It has been a mammoth journey but the Dutch team are the victors. It took a bracket reset and it took Oli playing to the end, waving that checkered flag. E-Team NL will be shutting out. In North Europe, AEW3 Esports, Fireman Jonas, Sieb, and Inferno showed the power of momentum versus the must-do Fluck. While Fluck managed to take early leads in both sets against AEW3, the Norse champions never failed to turn things around and win runaway sets without giving their foes a chance to catch their breath. It was surprisingly their first match of the tournament versus From the Air that gave them the most trouble, as he saw a match consisting of four consecutive Executive overtimes, which AW3 barely managed to clinch. Uh, e Team NL, who completed the bracket reset yesterday against the town team, we've had some amazing matches, and they're only going to keep on coming uh, as these days Another go one. on. We've still got the UK, France, and Germany, and the Middle East from this region alone. It is a brilliant, brilliant day at the office for AW3. The Middle Eastern tournament showcased the fierce strength of several spectacular teams, in particular the popular Sandrock gaming squad of Ocalid, Senzo, and Ahmed, who pulled off one of the most incredible turnabouts in the World Open thus far. After suffering a devastating 0-3 loss to Falcons Esports in the winners' finals, Sandrock battled their way back to the Grands through lower bracket for a rematch, and ended up winning it all, taking two extremely close sets back-to-back -to, -back to get revenge on the Falcons. 
the temple seemed to have been crumbling, but they have stood tall in the face of adversity. Sandrock Gaming, they are still the kings of Saudi Arabia. They will represent the Saudi Arabian and Middle Eastern region at the EMA Regional Finals at the Intel World Open. Up in the UK, Team Scouse Scouse Loiner, which is Archie Noli and Devo, nearly secured themselves a clean sweep until being unexpectedly stonewalled by Fleeksy in the Grand Finals, the very team they had 3 0 in the previous round. What resulted was a revolving door of shutouts and near shutouts, with both teams alternating wins until SSL closed it out with a devastating 6 0 scoreline in the final game. This is yeah. real then. What a team this is. 10 goal difference. This is a team. This is a team that could go up against BDS. Do you know what I mean? That is how good Scal Scal Sloiner are. Yeah. Like, there's no reason they couldn't. I, I feel like this is the Brilliant. best version of these teams. The d Shaft trio of Riz X45, Tox, and Catalysm blitzed through Germany entirely unscathed, winning all three of their matches with uncontested 3 0s, even shutting out their opponents entirely in the majority of the games, denying them even the satisfaction of a single goal. Their grand finals rematch with Donafeisch, the very first team they trounced in the tourney, went approximately the same way as before, with Donafeisch only scoring one more goal in the entire set. Finally, to cap things off, let's take a look at the results for France, which in a weird twist of fate, almost became a microcosm of the RLCS X European Championship. The two teams at war were Team B, made up of Team Vitality's current roster of Fairy Pete, Kadop, and Alpha 54, and Ricardo Kaka, which includes two members of Team BDS's Season X squad, meaning their grand final showdown was also something of a grudge match between the spirit of the two titans. It ended up being nearly as close as close can be. Ricardo Kaka, coming from the lower bracket, took their first set at the 11th hour, leading to one final match for all the marbles. Team B managed to get their act together this time, albeit not without some staunch resistance from RK. Representing his nation, Team B, after re having the bracket reset upon them, Ricardo Kaka can't hold on, and it was inevitable in the end. We took the long route there, Cole, but Team B will be your representatives for France in the EMEA Regional Finals. The Regional Finals are fast approaching, so don't even blink. Before you know it, the dust will have settled and we'll all be staring down the headlights of the four Intel World Open World Champions. Joining me on the line is Musty. Usually that's a full name, but he's a mysterious man. Musty, a popular Rocket League YouTuber. Joining me on the line. Thank you for joining me, Musty. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here, man. Uh, I want to break down just a, a bit of your career. Obviously, you know, um, you and I both know you're a popular Rocket League YouTuber. Some people uh, out there might not know. Go subscribe to him right now. You're on your way to, to 3 million right now, uh, I think, which is phenomenal. Uh, I want to go back a bit to, to kind of where it started for you. Um, at least brand name wise anybody that follows the esport will absolutely know that the name musty flick uh had originated from your name can you walk us through uh what that was all like you know when when people started calling it the musty flick is that ever weird for you so i was back in the day i was probably like around gold rank uh i, I was, wasn't the best player i was still learning the physics of the game and stuff and i kind of found a weird way to Flip, like on accident and I just kind of elaborated on that started doing it on purpose I uh, got a really cool flick with a ball in my car and I didn't actually even name it the musty flick but I posted it to the subreddit and my username was a musty cow from Xbox name generator and then people started calling it that but I don't know I never expected it to go like like it's like mainstream mainstream now if I'd like the high, high levels of gameplay and freestyling for sure. Now I want to uh, jump over to talking about NRG before I let you go here, um, because obviously now you're signed on with NRG. You're the sub for the team. Um, you know I want to I want to see what it's like for for content creator slash sub here, because obviously you're busy with you have your your own work that you're doing here, um, and now you also have to kind of worry about being a, a sub player. Is that a lot of strain? Is it a lot of extra work on you? Um, you know, are you in scrims? Are you in um, sessions where they're watching over VODs and that? What's what's kind of your involvement with the team, uh, like the, the players, the professional team themselves, or is it a little more hands-off? Uh, it's definitely like a more stressful for sure. But like I said, you know, shout out to Cadence, shout out to Lofo, those are my two editors. So now I, I have a lot of time to just play the game, you know what I mean? I have a lot of time to really grind the game now, which I didn't have before, but uh, being a sub for, in Rocket League at least, and I, I feel like in a lot of other esports, it's 100% hands off. I really don't do too much, but on game day, you know, just in case something crazy happens, 
Justin throwing up, squishy, you know, his internet goes out, anything, anything happens like that, I'll be ready, and, you know, I, I feel like, you know, it's a good group of guys, we're all friends, so, like, you know, if we lose, or, you know, I'm, I'm expected to play bad, you know what I mean, and I'm definitely not on that level, but, uh, if we win, you know, I'm gonna make a cool video out of it, but, yeah, it, it'll definitely be stressful if I ever get playing time, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I remember, yeah, you, I, you must be, excited. like, are you, on those days, are you, like, excited to get in because i'm pretty there was i'm pretty sure you know what clip it is too um where <laughs> where your face is just <gasps> when you yeah. when you heard something about i think justin uh having problems and uh <laughs> it looked like you're like hey, do i get to play are you excited like is that an exciting moment like do you want to get in there and play okay yeah so i, I do these watch parties and that happens i swear every time nrg plays that something happens some sort of disconnect and then the commentators are like okay something's gone wrong here we're gonna have to uh, Hop uh, back and though that is pure nervousness. I I genu I, I'm act I feel like people think I like, really want to get on the field I I mean if I do cool, but like I I'd rather you know I think everyone can agree like there's a much higher chance You know, they're gonna win if they're all three together. They have years of experience together Plus they're just insane. They're the best players in the world, but yeah, it's it's anxious every time every time someone disconnects or anything like that and uh, and even when it comes down to it on the day of uh, like to perform and in front of people, that nervousness still hits, eh? Like, it's still a, a real thing. Yeah, 100%, man, 100%. <laughs> Musty, thank you so much for joining. No problem. No problem. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Let's go. No. Oh, my God, you hit that. He's a banger. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I'm faking out here. Yeah, I'm definitely selling my club back. Jeez. <laughs>
was pretty good. Next, Dismal Owl 7053 wants to enter this into the best AFK contest. Hey, another nose grind. And wait a minute, there's an AFK goal contest? I need to tell my teammates about this. They'll be winning all the time because I'm doing all the work. Push him. No, they're just AFK. They don't get goals. Moving on, Truxy RL says this is the best crossbar challenge clip you'll ever see. And some say that to this day, it's still going. It's actually not. The clip is longer, but it was over a minute that it was doing that. So we had to cut it off. I just love that when gamers see something new they hadn't seen, everyone just stops to witness the moment. That's actually how Johnny Boy's channel got started. He started live streaming the ball spinning on the goal line way back and thousands of people tuned in. We just want to see cool, unique things, really. Our next one here, though, comes from Jesse B 23 who found a new way to get himself into a rule one. First off with camera setting, but we're cartwheeling now? More like car wheeling. I'll, it says I'll show myself out, but no, you know what? I'm giving full credit to the producer on that one. I have no part. I have no part in this. That was, that was all them hands off. Finally, Dark Synth found a new way to teach his teammates how to rotate properly. Sometimes, people just need to learn the hard way. And unfortunately, I've had to do this way more than, uh, than I'd like to in the past in my games. Just get in there. Just go for it. I'm behind you, buddy. Anyways, we gotta move on up next. It's all about Farah in Double Tap. We've covered some of France's best and brightest on the show before, but one name that goes oft overlooked and underappreciated is Mr. Airbus himself, a longtime Rocket League renegade who's achieved some truly astonishing victories over the years. While Farah got his start in the competitive scene as early as 2016, his big break into the big leagues came a year later when he qualified for Season 3 of the RLCS as part of the team Leftovers. While he just barely managed to snatch a spot in the European League, the Leftovers gradually improved over the course of the season, ultimately finishing third overall, high enough to move on to the World Championships. Ten seconds left now, leftovers, two goals up, looking like this should be it for them. Revco tries to keep it alive and Siki's gonna dash that right there. Leftovers, gonna grab your third place seed for the LAN Season 3 RLCS and Northern Gaming. Gonna end up in that fourth place seed, they're all gonna land, they gotta be happy, but again, seeding, a little extra money. Congratulations to Leftovers. Farah's first ever land got off to a rocky start, however, as the Leftovers lost their debut match against Rogue, sending them down to the lower bracket extremely early in the tournament. The first-timers weren't ready to go home yet, however, and instead of folding, powered through with an impressive run, making it all the way to the lower semifinals before getting knocked out by eventual champions, Northern Gaming. Touch is not as strong, but luckily for him, these two other players are doing a fantastic job as the ball is in front of the net. Ramco does it! Oh my goodness, I cannot believe they were to pull this out! And Northern Gaming gonna knock out the leftovers in spectacular fashion. The leftovers so close to bringing back this sweep, at least getting that game, but it wasn't to be a Northern Gaming once again. Later that year, Farah would join PSG Esports alongside fellow French Dynamo Chazette 45, ushering in the era in which he would see his greatest successes yet. Not long after, the squad would place first in the 2017 ESL France, taking down two thirds of the team that would eventually form Team Vitality's legendary roster in the process, the first of many impressive notches in Farah's belt. PSG's next major triumph was at the DreamHack Leipzig Open in early 2018, a stacked event which saw them emerge victorious against many of the best players in the world, both present and future. His 
In the meantime, Farah continued to perform well in the RLCS, consistently placing within the top four in Europe despite being unable to match his debut performance at LAN. All of this was just a warm-up for his and PSG's toughest competition yet, 2019's DreamHack Pro Circuit Valencia. Among their conquests at the event were European Titans Dignitas, along with the American champions Cloud9 and champions to be NRG, whom Farah and co. trounced in the grand finals to claim the $50,000 prize. PSG just needs to survive a few more seconds! Nerd is gonna go to the air! Garrett G's up! He's coming in! Shot blocked! I don't think anybody can get there! PSG! Make it happen! While the PSG roster would jump ship to Team Reciprocity midway through Season 8, it ended up being Farah's best season on record so far. For the first time, the experienced player managed to take first place in Europe, an excellent achievement with which to close the book on the PSG chapter of his career. This time, they actually get one, but they gotta get down the field fast. Fairy Peak, popping this up high. Scrub Killer close, and it's not gonna happen. Chalset kicks it down the field. They got to score with any amount of time left to have a chance at it. But time expires the ball in the blue half of the field. The Coles are hot and just set the hottest sweeping vitality out of the regional finals. They are your European king. Farrow would be shuffled around a bit over the course of the next few seasons, eventually landing on Solari's roster, just in time to put up one hell of a fight against the dominating Team BDS, finish Season X in a solid placement. On the precipice of taking us to the third mm. series of this set. Solari has just come out of their shell, and they are looking like a brand new team. A touchdown from Dementor will not find that bottom corner, though. They need an equalizer, otherwise the third series in this set will be found. Atomic Central, a touch from Shaw set, it just keeps it away from the defenders. Oh, we're running out of time now, there's going to be no chance at all for oh. Queso to come back. And by three <laughs> games to one. Ferris long since made a name for himself, but so long as he keeps putting the pedal to the metal, his star will continue to rise in Europe and beyond. Now that Solari has released that roster, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to this trio, because uh, as much as I love Ferris, there's always been talks about you know, where is he in the competitive scene there? What level is he at there? I'd love to see him stay because he's the most adorable person in the world. Uh, but Astro, you know, has got to be looking around for, for something else too. I liked how they started performing by the end. I'd love to see him stick together. Just don't know if that's going to happen, especially with the powerhouse of BDS uh, ahead of them. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot of mix-ups in the European region and just everywhere, to be honest. So... We'll see what Farah makes of his future here, but that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for watching. You can check more of our content on YouTube and of course on Twitter at Squad State. Thank you again for watching and for a little overtime action. Here's your weekly backfire.